Looking to make easy, soft, edible Play-Doh in minutes? Today I'm sharing my go-to recipe, literally the best. It feels just like the real thing. If you guys are new here, my name is Rachel from The Confused Millennial. I share tons of kids activities, mom story at home tips, and more. I also have a blog post, so if you need to go back and reference anything in this video, that will be linked in the description box below. And it also has two more Play-Doh recipes in case you don't have some of these ingredients on hand. And at the end of this, I will also talk about ways to troubleshoot your Play-Doh recipe. So if it comes out too dry or too sticky, we're gonna get there. Plus tips for creating the most vibrant colored Play-Doh. If you guys don't have time to make your own Play-Doh, I will recommend the brand The Dough Project. And I will leave a link in the description box below. They use food to color their Play-Doh. So think beets, turmeric, spirulina, all that good stuff. So if you are looking for a store-bought edible Play-Doh, that is my go-to branch. And I like to have a few jars at home just in case I don't have time to make Play-Doh. All right, let's get into it. For this Play-Doh recipe, you are going to need one cup of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup of regular old table salt, one tablespoon of oil, and you can use any oil here, coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil, vegetable oil, whatever you got in the pantry works, three quarters of a cup of boiling water, one tablespoon cream of tartar, one tablespoon of vegetable glycerin. Vegetable glycerin is used in a lot of supplements, so you guys are probably already eating this without realizing it. It's also used in a lot of beauty products, so while I would not chug a jar, this small amount and this much Play-Doh is totally taste safe and gonna be okay. And then if you want to dye your Play-Doh, you'll want to use some food coloring or, and we'll talk more about this at the end, you could use crayons or even like jello packets, Kool-Aid packets, pudding packets, any of that type of stuff you may have in the pan. Tree. But first, step-by-step -step instructions for making your Play-Doh. Number one is going to be bringing that water to a boil. And while you're waiting for the water to boil in a large bowl, you're going to mix flour, salt, oil, cream of tartar, and vegetable glycerin. Once that water is boiling, you're going to add it to the bowl with the rest of your ingredients. You're going to mix this up pretty well and it's going to be kind of like gooey and gummy, so let it cool for about five minutes after you mix it up a little bit. Once you can easily handle it, it's not too hot to the touch, you're going to go ahead and just knead that mixture into a nice Play-Doh ball. I have coarse countertops. They worked really well for just kneading it directly on there. The countertop actually was cooling it. So if you have quartz or granite countertops, that should work just fine. And then of course you can add color. So there's a few different ways you guys can go about this. Number one, if you're making one color Play-Doh. You could add the food coloring to the water at that step. However, if you want to make multiple colored Play-Dohs, you can wait and just make your Play-Doh all white and then separate and section it off and add the food coloring directly into the uncolored sectioned off balls. At that point, you're just gonna need the food coloring into the Play-Doh ball. You could even give this to your kids to do themselves. Just be careful in case the food coloring dyes anything, but it's really simple. You'll just keep mixing it in until you have the desired color and consistency. I don't have exact measurements on drops with food coloring because in my experience, the gel food coloring tends to be a little bit finicky. Sometimes it comes out really red, sometimes it doesn't. It comes out more blue. So you'll just keep adding more until you get the color you want. Or you can go with crayons. Crayons are by far going to give you the best color for your Play-Doh, the most traditional colors. And for that, you would go ahead and melt down your crayons first and then proceed with the instructions that I already gave. And then of course, another option would be, and you would add this in around the same time you're adding the water in, would be to just use a jello packet, a Kool-Aid packet, a pudding packet, and obviously whatever color you have on hand is what color your Play-Doh will come out and be. So now, now, if your Play-Doh comes out too sticky with this recipe, it's super simple. All you're gonna do is add more flour. I just toss the flour right onto my counter, throw some on my hands, and just re-knead it until the flour is all absorbed and you have your desired consistency. Especially if you're in a humid climate, do not be surprised if this comes out a little bit too sticky at first. Now, if your Play-Doh dries out, either you made it too dry or your kid left it out for the afternoon or evening and you wanna kind of bring it back to life, just gonna add a little bit of water water back into this and re-knead it once again. Definitely go slow with adding the water back in because you don't want to end up with a slimy mess that you then need to add flour in to kind of fix the mistake. But if you do 
do end up with too slimy of play-doh just do the flower trick and there you have it easy soft edible play-doh that feels just like the real thing takes only a few minutes to make and your kids can totally taste it and you don't need to worry if you end up making your own play-doh I'd love to hear how it goes drop a comment below share your favorite recipe tag me on Instagram if you guys are doing this with any of your kids at the confused millennial as always my name is Rachel have a good one